segment three, we're going to install and run the Arduino IDE. Uh, and IDE is uh, just a fancy way of saying development environment. Uh, it's the coding environment for the Arduino, as opposed to the actual hardware device itself, uh, which is the uh, Arduino board, as it's call commonly called. And the uh, installation process for this is very similar to uh, processing. Uh, you go to arduino.cc, you download the uh, environment for your operating system. Uh, you install the Arduino software. Uh, you'll also need to install some drivers, uh, which is actually pretty simplified and streamlined as well. Uh, and then we'll start up the Arduino, connect it USB cable between the Arduino board and the computer, and then uh, run an example. So going back to the web browser, I'm going to just close out processing for the moment. Uh, go back into web browser, and we're going to go to arduino.cc, and this is also kind of like processing.org. Arduino.cc is the clearinghouse for information on uh, the Arduino. And the first place that we're going to go here, uh, you know, you can buy them. They have references to where to buy. But the first thing we're interested in right now is download. They have the three major flavors, Windows, OS X, and Linux. Uh, in my case, OS X. Um, it's going to download. And uh, basically the same thing for uh, OS X versus Windows. Uh, Windows, you download it, you open it up. It's just basically an EXE file. Uh, you place, you have on Windows, make sure that you keep the folder intact, uh, how you downloaded it. Uh, and you can move it to your program fi files folder if you'd like. Um, on Linux, again, uh, you're kind of on your own, um, but there are instructions on the web on how to do that. Uh, when we get this open up, you'll see on OS X, there is uh, not only an Arduino uh, over to the Applications folder thing like that, uh, which now I'm just copying that Arduino application into Applications. Uh, there is uh, the serial driver. Uh, which also needs to be installed in order for the computer to be able to talk the language of the Arduino. On Windows, the first time you install, uh, the first time you plug your Arduino into your USB port while the computer is running, while Windows is running, uh, on XP it will kind of download automatically. Uh, and on Vista, it will um, bring up some prompts to allow you to download. Uh, so in some ways, Windows is actually easier to install the Arduino environment on uh, than OS X is. Now, uh, right now, just to go over that, though, the serial drivers are just basically like you would do for printer drivers or a scanner driver. It's just basically a way, a protocol for the computer to be able to talk the language of the device you're plugging into it. Uh, while that's going there, I'm just going to open up the Applications folder, uh, look for Arduino in there, uh, and in my case, drag it down to the dock, um, or however it is you like to organize your applications. I'm going to open that up. This was installed successfully uh, from the internet. Yes, I do want to open it anyways. and. There we go. That's what that environment looks like. I'm going to close out some of these windows back here just so we have a clearer view of what the Arduino lo environment looks like. And you can see it's uh, pretty similar to processing. There's a place to write code here. Uh, there's a play button, which uh, in this case is a little misleading. Uh, this is actually to verify that the code works properly, uh, not to actually run the code. Uh, to run the code, you press this upload button. And the upload button um, actually sends the program that you're writing down here up into the Arduino. And then from that point on, it runs on the Arduino. And if you were to unplug the Arduino, plug the Arduino into a separate power supply, like a 9-volt battery, 
uh, it'll run whatever code you ran on there, whether it's plugged into a computer or not. So uh, what we're going to do is run an example. Uh, you know, open up examples, uh, and we're going to open up a uh, simple, um, let's see, digital blank. So under examples, digital blank. And all this is going to do is just basically make a little LED that's on the Arduino board itself uh, blank on and off. What I'm going to do is there's a little USB port on the end of this keyboard that I'm just plugging this into. Um, and you'll see as soon as I plugged it in, some light started coming on here and here. Uh, that's just kind of telling me it's on, it's alive, and it's receiving some information. Or it's actually running a little routine right there, but we're going to replace that. Um, so back to the screen. Uh, we're going to do a couple of things in Arduino to set it up. Uh, one of them is we're going to want to make sure that we have the proper board uh, selected. Uh, the Dua Melanove or the Dissamia uh, are the two most common ones. I'm using this top one, the Dua Melanove. And uh, then after you do that, you're going to want to go back into that tools menu check out serial port, and in this case, the only thing that's showing up is this one. You'll want the one that says TTY, and then that's the actual USB port that the Arduino is connected to. Now, if the Arduino was the last thing that you connected into the computer, it's probably at the top of this list. Uh, if you're unsure, then unplug the Arduino, and um, then go back and look at that uh, serial port, it's telling me there's nothing attached to it, so it's not even giving me an option. If I plug it back in again, um, and I look over here at serial port, uh, there it is again. And so I'm going to select the one that starts off with TTY. And after that, we're going to press the uh, upload button. And um, now, as soon as I press this, you'll see uploading the I.O. board. Uh, and if you're looking at your Arduino while that's going on, you should see a couple uh, little yellow LEDs on there blink really quickly. Uh, when it's this done uploading message uh, is finished, then you'll also see that those lights turn off. But then that the yellow LED that is next to where it says ground and the pin that's marked 1-3 uh, will just blink on and off because that's all this script is telling it to do is basically tell this LED attached to pin 13 uh, to blink on and off. So if you want to show a shot of the Arduino again, you can we show are. We are. Oh, you are? Oh, excellent. Yeah, there it is. Blinking on and off. Simple enough. All right. So that's it, pretty much. Uh, you know, just download the environment, install the software and the drivers, connect up the Arduino, the USB cable, and then run an example. Uh, questions on this section? Yeah. Um, are there any processing libraries that are platform specific? Um, not that I know of. There might be. Not that I know of. I think. Typically, the third-party libraries, especially the ones that are on the processing website itself, are uh, pretty much cross-platform compatible. It has more to do with the Java version that you're running than it has to do with the operating system itself. And also, uh, Eduardo in the classroom asks about um, if you need to be careful about uh, static electricity. Uh, you might want to be. Yeah. <laughs> Might need a strap. <laughs> <laughs> you could. There's really not a lot of juice going through here. You're probably not going to get shocked from it. Um, you can overcurrent an Arduino. I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was by plugging in a really large motor driver into it, and some current came off the ground and back into the Arduino and fried it. Um, but it took a lot of current. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And it, I don't know if you can switch back to the uh, overhead view. Somebody asked to get a closer look of the Arduino, if you could raise it up towards the camera. Yeah, sure. That would be lovely. So you can see a little bit more let's detail see. about the Arduino. Yeah, let's just... 
Let's see if I can get it up. <laughs> it's hard to do. Hard to do. <laughs> not, not too close. It won't be able there to focus. Oh, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Nice. That's what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dewey Milanove. Yeah, Dewey Milanove. 2009. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And uh, somebody asked, we did specify that we need Arduino version 018. Um, they have 017. So should they upgrade for this class? Uh, it's probably not necessary, but it's uh, recommended. There's probably bug fixes and stuff in there that will you know, prevent problems in the future. Okay. And um, what somebody asks what the CU serial port is for. Both appear when you plug in the Arduino. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Okay. That's, I think, um, a more kind of advanced thing that people who understand serial port communications could probably answer that better. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me remind everyone, I, I have a fine art background. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. And so you may not be able to answer this question. Can I program the at mega 16 or at mega 32 with Arduino? Um, if you, now I haven't seen the at mega 16 or 32. The very original Arduino boards use the at mega 8. And then they jumped over to an at mega 128. Um, but I would say if you start getting into learning, uh, there's a way you can you can actually create a breadboard version of an Arduino if you buy the chip and all of the you know the crystals and the capacitors and resistors and stuff. You can actually create an Arduino board from scratch um, with just a few parts, really. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and then one last question about Arduinos from me. Um, Sam Barani asks, uh, that says he's building his own kit, or she's building her own kit. Do we need a logarithmic or linear potentiometers? Uh, linear are best. Um, logarithmic would probably do, as long as it's a, a 10, 0 to 10K resistive range, it'll work fine.